Hello boys and girls, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stian and today we're gonna look at a very unusual watch. This is a Chronosport Chronosail and it's a regatta watch, kind of. We see it's a chronograph and it has a the yellow hand we see is actually the countdown to a regatta start. And uh, then you have that uh, marking in uh, green and red, which uh, shows 10 and 5 minutes left to start. Regatta watches were pretty popular back in the day. Uh, I think the 60s and 70s were the heyday of this uh, type of watch. They even made uh, specific movements that counted down uh, to the start. This one is a bit more straightforward. And we see it's got a really chunky case, brushed finish all around, a very good condition, very nice style. And it runs okay. So we uh, see that it shouldn't be a problem to make it run uh, very nicely. And let's get back to that. When we start the chronograph, we see, uh, if we speed it up a little bit at least, we see that uh, the minutes are creeping. While in the pure regatta watches, uh, they were flicked over every uh, 30 seconds. So I kind of get a Crocodile Dundee vibe here. He's got a knife! That's not a knife! This is a knife! This is an actual regatta watch. We'll uh, see this one on the channel later. But uh, back to uh, the Chronosport one. Most people might not have uh, heard too much of this brand, but it's actually very tightly uh, linked to Zinn, the German brand. The founder, Helmut Zinn, uh, was a pilot and obviously uh, very interested in watches. So he made uh, the brand Zinn uh, quite successful. Big focus on uh, pilot's watches, of course. Let's just halt this story a little bit while we take the hands off and see them fly away. Be free. And the reason we did it that way is because the minute counter is actually a twin hand quite uh, strange and uh, something else we see that there's a lot of plastic and the dial is actually press fit into the plastic so an unusual watch indeed while we take the dial off we can uh, finish this story about uh, Zinn so Helmut Zinn he uh, retired from uh, Zinn uh, the company in uh, 1994 at the tender age of 78 years old. But he got bored. So the next year he started another brand and that was then Chronosport. So Chronosport is obviously not a big brand, but they made uh, solid watches for a very affordable price. And of course, part of the reason uh, for that is uh, also this movement. We're going to see a lot of parallels actually to uh, other movements we discussed uh, on this channel. But first we can see there's a lot of plastic in this movement. And this is a Lemania movement. But this movement, uh, it's uh, caliber 5270, but it's based on uh, 5100. Now, if you uh, haven't done so, uh, the Le Mania video is uh, quite interesting, I think. Not only for the content, uh, but some of the history about Le Mania. And uh, part of that is, of course, the claim that uh, Le Mania was a very high-end uh, manufacturer of chronographs. And then you sort of have to ask yourself, so do high-end chronographs use 20% uh, plastic? And as we're taking off the chronograph parts, we can see that they're actually stamped out of uh, metal sheets. And very few of them are held in with screws. They're mostly just uh, friction fit. 
and that reminds us quite a lot of uh, the 7750 family which uh, for instance uh, the Eberhardt video uh, discussed but uh, also I would say the uh, Omega Speedmaster uh, reduced which has the modular uh, chronograph uh, movement with pretty much uh, only stamped out uh, pieces and not screwed down. So am I then sort of saying that this is uh, not a good movement? No, I'm not. It is a Lemania movement. And the movement this one is based on, the 5100, is also known as the Omega 1045, which was used in the Speedmaster uh, Mark 4.5. So, um, how come then that uh, it's so different from uh, the other Lemania that we worked on? Well, you probably guessed it already. This is a post quartz uh, crisis movement, one of the first they really made uh, brand new after the quartz crisis started uh, hitting. It was launched in uh, the mid 70s. And I think in a lot of ways you can uh, sort of sense part of the future to come, even though they actually went maybe farther than, uh, let's say, necessary. We see even the pillar wheel is stamped out parts that are then press fit in. So an extremely economical uh, movement to make, of course. And it does provide uh, very good performance, and it is very solid, actually. But it's, of course, quite different from uh, what we uh, think of uh, with the Lemania movement, or an Omega movement, for that sake. And it really is uh, a very interesting movement, quite unusual. Another unusual thing with this caliber, as compared to other Lemania calibers or Omega, is uh, the barrel uh, solution. We see it has a pin going through it, in the same uh, way as uh, we saw in the, the Junghans watch, for instance. Also a very cheap way of doing it. So there's so many things in this movement that uh, screams out cost savings. And to Lemania's credit, it's still a very high-performing uh, movement. Anyway, let's get all uh, the parts in the basket and uh, take it off to the cleaning machine. There are a couple of plastic uh, parts uh, fixed to the main plate that we're leaving on. Otherwise, we're not putting uh, plastic in the cleaning machine. And with the cleaning machine pulling more than its weight, we can uh, look at the pretty weighty case of uh, the watch. We're of course going to clean the case, going to take the pushers out and then clean the whole thing for the case and uh, other big parts. We're going to use the ultrasonic. And if you haven't heard the sound of the ultrasonic uh, before, then uh, you're in for a treat. Now you guys are lucky, because I'm just playing that sound for like a couple of seconds. But it's actually running for like four or five minutes uh, right where I'm sitting. So yeah. Anyway. We got the stuff back from the cleaning machine, so we can uh, put the mainspring back in. We think it's good enough, looked uh, quite nice. Just gonna grease it a little bit. And uh, again, this barrel doesn't have a barrel arbor, so the barrel arbor is sort of uh, part of the lid, so we just twist that in. The second thing we do before we start assembling is uh, to oil the capstones. 
put a little drop of uh, 9010 in the middle of the capstones covering about uh, half the capstone another thing that of course saves a lot of costs is uh, not finishing things to a very high standard you see the balance cock has uh, brushed finish and the same goes for the three-quarter plate but that's pretty much it and again it doesn't mean it's ugly this is not an ugly sight but it's very industrial very pragmatic also uh, not a lot of jewels in this movement 17 and uh, that's not a lot for uh, a new chronograph movement but we see there's quite a lot of uh, bearings directly in the metal in the plates and I see this uh, pretty interesting way of uh, doing the chronograph uh, wheel. So the central seconds chronograph counter. It's uh, pinion directly driven. And the clutch wheel here is part plastic, which is also, of course, uh, economical. It sort of points out to uh, that there was a really, really deep fear of being uh, outperformed, outcompeted. But that they still managed to make something as solid as this movement uh, is performance wise. That just tells you that these guys do know what they're doing. Before we uh, put on the three-quarter plate, uh, we're going to fix or drop the escape wheel and the pallet fork. And that is to make uh, oil uh, basically uh, stick, or not stick, but stay uh, more put. But we're going to clean the pivots of them uh, so that we don't get any residue in the movement. And then we can place this beautifully decorated three-quarter plate. Look at that. Well, it's not ugly, it's just different. And it's just very interesting to see that the uh, movement from 1975 went so far in trying to save costs to really stay competitive because the whole livelihood of half of Switzerland was uh, at stake. So yeah, very interesting. The keyless works is also uh, a little bit different than uh, what we're used to. Also here we have uh, a rather unusual uh, part. This one, the yoke. Looks more like a york or folk maybe. Like a fork end. Okay, my kids think that's super funny. Now look out for wobbly time. Wobble, wobble. That's the chronograph uh, seconds counter. And it's loose in the bearing. And no, we're not putting the cannon pin in, uh, upside down, but we are oiling it so that it uh, slips as it should. And the cannon pinion is uh, very important for giving support to that uh, long uh, chronograph seconds pinion. Until we have that cannon pinion uh, in place, that long seconds uh, chronograph seconds pinion is kind of in danger of binding. So that's also a bit odd. It also means that. Um, to get optimal performance out of the movement, you basically need to have the whole movement uh, assembled so that that uh, long pinion uh, becomes uh, stabilized. Given that this is a high bit movement, 
We're using uh, Grease on the escape wheel. So 9415. It's uh, not a crime to use 9415 or Grease on uh, any escape wheel, but uh, you don't have to use it on the regular low beat uh, movements. To get the balance back in, we have to sort of uh, massage it in. Of course, uh, it helps a lot if you're uh, married and you're used to being uh, gently asked if you can uh, perform a massage as part of the daily pedicure uh, manicure routine. Well, that's why we got married in the first place. Okay, let's uh, oil the pivots. And we're going to demagnetize the movement as we always do. One thing here, if uh, the movement has a hacking function like uh, this one does, it is always a good practice to uh, stop the balance when you uh, demagnetize. And that performance is uh, acceptable. So maybe this ain't a half bad movement after all. So let's start uh, assembling the chronograph parts. This uh, plastic uh, cover plate, uh, we cleaned it and we're going to just put uh, these different parts back in again. We have the press fit uh, date uh, driving wheel. And then we can put in place the quick set uh, corrector uh, mechanism. And that one goes through this uh, plastic uh, cover plate. And then we can press that uh, three prong plastic wheel on top of it. And yeah, just checking that it works before we press that uh, three pronged uh, plastic wheel on. Also, just press fit. And imagine that some people complain about plastic parts in Psycho watches. <coughs> I guess that someone might be me, but uh, anyway, with uh, the plastic uh, parts all gathered up, let's uh, put on the chronograph parts. Very simple chronograph mechanism. Of course, there's no hour counter. And this uh, does remind me of uh, the Dubois de Pra module that we uh, looked at in the Speedmaster uh, video. So there's a lot of parallels that we can see running through this movement. And that's what makes it uh, quite fascinating. We're uh, putting some uh, molly coat or uh, 9504 on the pillar wheel and we're using D5 on the other contact points here on the pivots For the chronograph minute wheel, we um, oil the heart shaped cam using some uh, HP 1300 or D5. And with all the pieces in place, we can uh, put this uh, plastic cover plate back on again. Of 
quite important to hold this plate down while you screw on uh, or screw down the first couple of screws because there are a couple of uh, pins going into the cover plate and if those are not in the right place then you're gonna have to redo the whole uh, thing and I'm a strong believer in uh, that laziness is a virtue now the right kind of laziness that is the one that makes you be efficient. So very few screws in this movement. I think there are fewer screws than there are jewels. And there are not a lot of jewels. So what do you think, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Is this a nice movement or is it uh, too plasticky? Comment below. With all the date components in place, we're uh, checking that uh, the quick set works and also that it works to uh, move the hands through midnight. And here is where plastic is actually a very good material because of the natural springiness. We're getting ready to uh, place all the hands. It's the standard routine so far. We uh, turn the crown until the date changes, and then we know that should be midnight. So then we put the hour hand at midnight then. What is different is that the next hand we put on is not the minute hand. It's the chronograph uh, double minute hand. And we want the yellow uh, hand to be uh, at the start of the regatta timer. And then the white hand will be at zero. And then we can put the minute hand on top of that. So, uh, unusual. Not your run of the mill uh, Omega 565, that's for sure. As always, we're double checking that the hands are uh, parallel to uh, the dial, that they don't uh, foul each other. Then we can put on the, the chronograph seconds hand. Now one thing uh, people asked after doing the high bit uh, Psycho Lord Marvel is uh, for the seconds hand. Why 36,000 beats per hour is uh, not uh, really in use anymore. And if we look at this uh, 28,800 seconds hand, we see it's also very smooth is slightly less smooth than uh, the 36,000. Uh, That's still smooth enough for a successful Saturday night. Let's also check the chronograph function that it uh, goes back to zero and that looks all right. One thing we have to do is to uh, make sure that uh, the bezel with the markings for the hour uh, lines up perfectly. So we're going to put uh, the movement in the case and then we can line up the bezel. And when we're confident that it's uh, centered, we're going to press the bezel onto the case again. I'm doing that uh, off camera. That's a lot of things I'm doing off camera. By the way, there's a very funny uh, game called uh, Dirty Mind. If you haven't tried it, then uh, it's a good one. It's a uh, famous question is, uh, what's a term for uh, a woman? Four letters, uh, last three letters are U and T. And obviously the only thing that came into people's minds right now was aunt.
Now, fun fact. In uh, the Netherlands, rust red pants are like super posh. Because uh, people who have uh, boats wear rust red pants so that uh, rust stains won't show on their pants. And here's the perfect watch to go uh, with your rust red pants. We put on a NATO strap. I think that looks uh, much better actually with a watch. And it is a handsome watch indeed. Chunky for sure. You're not gonna forget you're wearing this one. And you're not gonna be late for your regatta start. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, clicking like and subscribe and leaving a comment will really help the channel. We'll be back shortly with another video. Until then, ta-ta.